Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is episode 73B, the answer portion of my What Is It Mystery Tools series. I think we've got these all identified according to the comments section, so let's get started with number one. Item number one is an interesting tool, and it's made by Amp Incorporated. They've been around a long time. I think I've had other tools made by them, electrical type tools, and this one even has a serial number here in addition to the model number, and uh, many people had the correct answer. They said that this was a Pica Bond crimping tool. Now, I looked it up. I don't really know what these are, but Pica Bond is a uh, connectors used in the telecommunications world, I believe. But someone said this is an expensive tool. Donated again by this man in Canada. Thanks to him. And I'll put a catalog picture right here that I found on the internet, but I don't think it tells you anything more than what I just told you. And this is interesting in that it's built around a vice grip locking pliers. I don't think this is a genuine vice grip, so I'm not sure. And it said that it can be mounted in a bench holder as well, or used by hand like this. Okay, here's item two. And it's labeled right there. I had tape over this. Steel and roller chain detacher, sometimes called a chain breaker. This one's made by Albert Lee Foundry. And as someone pointed out, one of these fingers right here is broken off and painted over probably many years ago. So that gave about three different, one, two, three different slots. And it's for holding that chain that they use typically in uh, the agriculture area, such as the chain used in a manure spreader or a grain elevator or an old planter or something like that. It's flat chain big links and it's used to hold it and repair it. I've never done it and hope I never have to. Item three is a sterret item and it's an accessory or what they call auxiliary base to be used on this size sterret uh, surface gauge. So I'm going to demonstrate that here in just a second how this works. But right now I'm going to put out of the 1935 catalog a still picture, there it is, you can barely see it, with a description of what it's supposed to do and then I'll show you what I think it's supposed to do. Remember Sterrett and other companies made these in several different sizes, but here's an example of how you might use this and it is reversible, so it's a bit of a V-way, but then again so is this. But here's a disc of iron, and if we wanted to make a concentric circle here, the V would go up against that and we could scribe it. I don't have any bluing on there. Furthermore, this is not a hardened uh, scriber. It was missing, and I made this two minutes ago, but it's out of soft 330 seconds welding filler rod. But that's what that's for. Let me show, let me reverse it now and show you. Okay, here it is in reverse, and that can be put just about any place you want on the tool, as long as you leave yourself a little room here for it to glide on. Tighten that down, make your measurement, put your bluing on there or whatever and you can just scribe right along like that. I just fell into a hole. Furthermore, many precision granite or metal surface plates allow you, have a true edge on them here, and allow you to do a similar type of scribing or measuring operation. And it's just a little fence is what it is. But now let me show you something else here I thought that is interesting. And this is a beautiful little surface gauge by Sheer Tomiko. Matter of fact, it's really nicer than the Sterrett if you want to know the truth. But it has the little built-in pins here. There's two of them. And when you push them down like that, and all of the larger ones have that too. Here's a Miller's Falls. 
those all move down but that also can be used on the edge of your work or the a surface plate or anything like that so you know I never have really used these features but that's what they are we'll get back to the finial here in a minute okay item four and there's two different designs here they are not the same company but these are fence stretchers I'm told barbed wire or woven wire luckily I never had to stretch a fence but th that's what these are and I suppose they're a dime a dozen because they only cost me about a dollar. <laughs> Alright, let's move on to five. Okay, item five is actually a, not a mystery tool, but what is the purpose of a little ball on the end of the shaft on virtually every surface gauge like you see here? Now, I have said for years that it's a finial. It's just meant to look pretty. It's ornamental and has absolutely no use. But there are several good guesses here, and let me show you. Okay, see that drawer or tote over there with the rag hanging out of it? Well, it's not just a tote. It is a porcupine den, and I'll show you why. Okay, I brought the porcupine den out into the open, but as you can imagine, when I go in here to reach to get one of my surface gauges. Look at all the points here that are just wicked. I've drawn a lot of type O over the years. So what is the purpose of the finial? I'm, I get so sidetracked, don't I? Many people told me it is used to park that bent point so that when you reach in there you're not going to get hurt. Well, you still got this point down here, but I I still don't think that was the intended purpose. I think that's just something that you can do with it. I think it's all about being beautiful. I talked to a few men the other day that did not know what the word finial meant. So uh, looking at the steam whistle, I wouldn't call this a finial. I call it a nut. But most antique whistles, steam whistles, had a beautiful finial up here, such as this, only proportional. And you see finials on bed posts and newel posts and flagpoles and, and other ornamental things. And they just finish it off. So I believe it's a finial. This is the 2018 Sterrett catalog. So it's not brand new, but there are two pages of surface gauges here. But what someone told me, and I learned so much from you guys in the comments, but look at these big surface gauges here. Do not even use the finial anymore. They were able to save seven cents per unit. But on the other page, the smaller ones still have that, probably because they have a warehouse full of them that they have to use up. Well, many people told me that the purpose of this is to uh, attach your indicator, specifically a last word indicator, because this little post here is part of the indicator. It's an accessory that goes on like this, and there's a nut. But that ball is not anywhere close to the size of any of these different balls. I measure them. Furthermore, they were making surface gauges with the finial long before this was available. And the purpose of this hole here is to fit onto the rod. Not this particular size, but on one of the smaller ones. So there's you know a lot of different ways of fastening this onto a a surface gauge besides the ball. So I do not believe that that is the correct answer. Well, I beat that subject to death. This is Mr. Peach saying so long for now, and I'll see you next time.